It's no surprise at this point just how much of our lives happen digitally. Yet, we're not often taught how to manage and organize our information in this digital space. This gets even worse when we talk about our sensitive information and our online security. If you're new here, my name is Juan Carlos Pontecha and I'm a software engineer currently working for Microsoft here in Seattle. And on top of my day-to-day -day engineering work, I make videos about my journey navigating the tech industry, career growth, and what I've learned about this lifestyle. In this video, I wanna share with you what I've learned about many iterations of organizing my own information online and my current strategy to accomplish this. Quick disclaimer, I am not a security engineer, nor would I say that I am an expert in digital security. This is just me sharing my own research and the practices that have served me the best as I navigate my own life. I totally encourage you to do your own research as you come up with your own strategy. First, why would you want to store any sensitive information on the cloud at all? It certainly comes with a slight increase in risk to store your information like this digitally. Depending on who you are, your role in society, or even your own risk aversion as an average citizen, it might make sense to not store any sensitive information digitally. There's absolutely no one-size-fits-all solution for security. It really depends to your own situation. But for some people, including me, the value and convenience of storing some information digitally and have it readily accessible in times where you need it outweigh the slight increase in risk of doing so. Given this, it's been useful to me to think in terms of two spectrums, security and convenience. And while they're not mutually exclusive, usually an increase in one does come hand in hand with a decrease in the other and vice versa. So I set out to find the sweet spot for my own needs and my own risk tolerance. So let's take a look at some of our options, starting with the most unsafe and building up towards the safer options. Storing your information and documents plainly in a cloud storage service. This is the most obvious choice and probably the first one people think of when they look for the convenience of having their information readily available wherever they go. If you only watch this far into the video and decide to stick with this option, try to do some research on the security of your cloud storage service and make sure you trust the company behind it. Just doing this option is by no means the safest thing, but you can at least leverage the security investments of the company that provides the storage service in order to make your information available wherever you go. With that said, there are a couple of relatively simple scenarios that make this option vulnerable. First, someone getting access to your account's password. And second, someone getting access to an unlocked computer or phone where you have previously signed into your account. This option is certainly convenient. You have your documents anywhere you go, but let's see if we can do better in the security department. Adding two-factor authentication to your cloud storage service. The most straightforward way to make the previous option a whole lot safer is by enabling two-factor authentication on your cloud storage account. If you're not familiar with two-factor authentication, it's simply a security method uh, that requires two separate and distinct forms of identification in order to give you access to something, in this case, your cloud storage account. This is usually a combination of two of the following. Something you know, like your password, something you have, like your smartphone or a token, and something you are meaning some biometrics like a fingerprint or a face scan. This prevents any person from accessing your sensitive information, even if they know your password. Since cloud services are not specifically designed to hold sensitive information and they intend to be practical, most of them remember your credentials in your browser or phone, even if you enable two-factor authentication for your account. This means that an unlocked computer or phone still leaves you exposed to unwanted access or modification of your data. Services dedicated to store sensitive information. The tech industry is no stranger to this problem. That's the reason companies have released tools to specifically store sensitive data in them safely. Password managers are the clear example of this. They require you to authenticate way more often than your average browser session to make sure that it's always you, the person that is accessing that data. And they also offer two-factor authentication on your account security, so you're protected even if your password gets compromised. Depending on the password manager that you look at, the features may vary, but most of them let you safely store plain text along with your passwords in the form of secure notes. This is great because you're leveraging the security investments that have been made to keep passwords safe with other kinds of sensitive data that you might want to keep handy. Password managers rank high in our security spectrum, and it's generally advised to use them. Through strong encryption and tightened access policies, 
the data you store in them generally stays confidential. Plus, since many of them act as a cloud service, you have access to your data wherever you have access to the internet and a way to validate your identity. This option ranks slightly lower in terms of convenience just because of how much more often you need to authenticate to access your data as opposed to a regular cloud service. But that trade-off for the security we get, in my opinion, is very well worth it. Encrypting your data with personal keys. There are laws enforcing tech companies to not look at or use your data in any way that you did not consent to. This is a huge topic that we won't really get too much into, but the point is that it's not in the best interest of tech companies to misuse your data. While it's very likely that your data gets stored and transferred with a strong level of encryption, it's technically not impossible for the tech company or cloud service to access that data. This is the most advanced option we're going to explore. But if you want to use a cloud storage service and you don't trust the company behind it, you can take matters into your own hands and add your own level of encryption. There are services out there like Cryptomator that allow you to encrypt and upload your data to one of these cloud storage services with you as a single owner of the private key that decrypts them. This, along with setting up two-factor authentication on your account, is as safe as you can probably get in terms of storing your sensitive data, because all your cloud service is going to see is a bunch of encrypted nonsense. While this sounds good, this step doesn't come without its inconveniences. Going this route means that in order to access your files, you're going to need special software installed on your computer that decrypts them and allows you to access them. This also means that you miss out on things like accessing your data from a regular browser, or any features that your cloud storage service provides that rely on reading your content, like search. While this might be appealing to some people, I find that the inconveniences of this approach outweigh the added security, so I really haven't tried this option myself. Now that we've looked at some of our options to store our sensitive data on the cloud with their varying degrees of security, we can step back and also consider convenience and organization. To do this, it's probably a good idea to identify some of the formats in which you generally find yourself needing to store data. For my needs, I can usually group my data into two categories. Plain text information, like your social security number, your passport number, or your address or employment history. And formatted documents like your passport or your driver's license or tax forms. Based on the options we explored, it appears that I'm suggesting to try and only store your sensitive data in password managers or similarly secure solutions. But password managers have limited supported data formats, many of them just allowing you to store secure notes in your account. That works for some of the plain text information that we just mentioned, but what about all of the important documents that you'll also want to store? Word documents, PDFs, and scans of physical documents. Some password managers, like 1Password, already support the ability to securely store and manage documents in their service, but I find the UX confusing and the organization hard to maintain. At this point in time, cloud services seem to have the upper hand in terms of convenience for this kind of data, just because they're built on top of the file hierarchy that we're all used to. But it's also not ideal to sacrifice the extra security layers that we get by using solutions like password managers. I had this dilemma for a while until I found one solution that seemed to bring together the best of both worlds. And it's a feature I've only found in OneDrive. Secure vaults within your cloud storage service. I think it's not a free feature, but OneDrive Personal Vault acts as a special directory within your OneDrive file hierarchy that has increased security access policies. This means that you can keep the convenience of storing your files in a hierarchy like you're used to, but with the added benefit that if you want to access the sensitive data, you need to authenticate with your phone once again. This opens a 20 minute window to access your data, after which you would have to authenticate again, pretty much in the same way that password managers do. For me, having that policy applied to documents is the right balance that I was looking for. Now that we've looked at our options, let me share where I landed with my own strategy. I just hinted towards this, but for anything that I could call a document, I use OneDrive Personal Vault. I don't manually encrypt the data I keep in there because I benefit from the convenience of being able to access that data on my phone or when I'm on the go, but you could if you want to. The extra layer of security that this vault provides gives me enough peace of mind to just store my documents in this file hierarchy that I own and organize. However, for information that is just plain text, I find OneDrive to be a bit of an overkill because I don't enjoy having to launch Word on my web browser or on my phone to access text that I'm just going to copy and take somewhere else anyways. 
For this reason, I opt to use password managers along with their secure notes feature to store things like my social security number or passport number or any other plain text based sensitive data that I want to keep handy. In my journey to find a password manager that suits my needs, I've tested LastPass and 1Password and I was hoping to test a couple more like Dashlane, but I instantly loved 1Password, user experience and its integration with the devices and browsers that I use the most made me stick with it as my main manager of sensitive information, let's call it. Additionally, their secure notes support Markdown, which I love, so that was another reason for me to just stick with it and manage my plain text with a bit extra control over how I want it to look. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's really no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to your security and managing your sensitive information digitally. There are a ton of tools and services out there. There are a complex range of requirements that individuals might have, along with their varying degrees of risk tolerance. So I hope you got something out of this video, and if you did, I would love to hear it in the comments below. And I'm always trying to learn more, so if you have any recommendations of your own that either me or anyone else watching this video could benefit from, please by all means also leave them down below, I would be really curious to read more about them. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving it a like below and subscribing for more content like this, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching.